is actually the first ever cooking demo that we've ever actually broadcasted to the general public. Uh, my name is Jim O'Toole. I'm a registered dietitian as well as uh, a senior group leader here at iDiet. And with me, of course, is Dr. Roberts. And Dr. Roberts is the uh, founder of iDiet as well as the chief scientific advisor and the, let's see, a professor at Tufts University. And she is also, um, let's see, uh, pretty much made every single book, every single recipe in this book. Thank you, Jen. And welcome, welcome to iDiet Cooking. We pride ourselves at iDiet on not just being the diet which helps hunger suppression better than any other program, but we also pride ourselves on having the best food. And one of our secrets, I guess, is that I was actually intending to be a chef before I became a nutrition scientist. And I really love cooking. And I felt very privileged to practice and make most of the recipes that we use in my own kitchen, which is where we are today. So we'll get started. Absolutely. Sure. So that's actually a great intro. So we're going to talk a little bit about, or we're going to actually do the recipes first. Um, so let me actually go through an agenda of what we're going to cover today. We're going to start with the uh, split uh, pea and ham soup. Right. And then after that, we're going to do the I diet chicken parm, which I can say as a group leader is one of the favorites of a lot of people in our program. After that, we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to do some of the non-cook option for anyone out there joining uh, who isn't really that into cooking or they'd rather uh, maybe do some less cooking options. So we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of products that we use personally. Uh, and then we're going to end with um, with some dessert. Sounds great. Right. Okay, let's get started. So soup. Now, I love to cook, I love to eat, but I don't love to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So some of our most popular recipes and the ones that I've enjoyed making the most are the easiest. And split pea and ham soup is like the easiest thing in the world. So here it is. And you know, I should also say there's different levels of difficulty and complexity. You can start with a ham hock and boil it and make stock that way. If you don't feel like doing that, you can buy a package of natural ham from Whole Foods or something like that and chop it up. And it's almost as good. Um, if you're a vegetarian, you can leave out the ham completely. So there's lots of really um, easy ways to do this. But I did, in fact, boil a ham hock yesterday. Now, I'm going to show you. And it's so simple that it's like crazy. So this is, this is my ham stock. And I'm going to pour this into a big pot. And I'm really pleased Jim is here because I can keep handing him stuff. It's like having someone looking after you in the kitchen. It's wonderful. Um, and so I have a pot. And I've chopped up, I've chopped up some onion, and I've chopped up some uh, celery. So I load those in. And sometimes, sometimes you can put those in afterwards, but it really doesn't matter. To be honest, you can put them in right from the get-go, like I'm doing now. And the recipe also calls for a pound of split peas. And so I actually had the Goya brand of split peas, which I get in my local market basket. They're really good. They're very inexpensive. And they do need rinsing a couple of times because um, the, uh, there's some dust and goodness knows what on the, on the peas. And so now I'm demonstrating why you shouldn't rinse them in advance, I think, because the peas are kind of stuck in the pot. So give me a minute while I loosen them up. Normally, if you just loosen them, if you just rinse them immediately before they, they just come straight out. But anyway, so I've rinsed my peas and I'm going to scoop them into the pot. And so now I have a pot which doesn't look anything like soup, but I'm going to cook that. I'm going to boil it for about one hour with the lid on. And then I'm going to add some chopped up carrots. I'm going to add the ham, which I shredded off the ham hock. Uh, I've got some salt and pepper here, which I can just add now, in fact. Um, and then at the last minute, I'm going to add one or two teaspoons of vinegar. And that's such a secret ingredient, which I don't know why, but it makes the whole thing come together really beautifully. And that's all you do. Yes, it's cooking but it's so easy. Uh, 
and you make a huge pot. I did actually make um, a huge pot earlier. So at this point, I have two huge pots of soup in my in my kitchen. But this this is um, this is a pot of the soup that I made earlier, and you can be quite experimental with this. I I had some leftover parsley in my kitchen from something I used it for last week, and I thought, oh, that would be good. So this one actually has a bit of chopped parsley as well. And uh, I thought it would be interesting to show you what we do with this soup. I mean, all we've done is we've poured everything in the pan, we've boiled it, and it turns into this wonderful, thick, interesting-looking soup. And there's a bunch of different things we can do with it. Uh, we can we can simply have a bowl of hot soup, and we can we can ladle out a really nice, generous portion of soup, and have it with a slice of butter. Uh, I'm sorry, a slice of bread with a smear of butter, and a piece of fruit. That for makes a whole that, meal. If for anyone that attended our last cooking uh, webinar, this is the I Diet Soda Bread, another one of the recipes that a lot of mm -hmm. red dieters love. And that's a complete meal. And you will be completely full at the end, and you will have had this delicious homemade soup. But so that's a great way to use the soup. Another way to use the soup is, OK, my sandwich meal. And so for people who like soup and sandwich, uh, this soup works really well. First of all, you have. You know, a smaller a smaller portion of soup, uh, because you've got a sandwich along alongside it. But then you can also make a sandwich. I've got here an English muffin, a high fiber, high protein English muffin by Thomas. It's the it's the Thomas Light muffin. They're really good. You can also get Pepperidge Farm uh, Deli Flats. They're also good. And then you can add some turkey or some lean ham. I've got some sliced low-fat cheese here. Uh, this is my favorite, Cabot Sharp Extra Light. That's very good. Some, some tomatoes, some lettuce. You chop your thing. Uh, maybe a few pickle slices on the side. And here you have an amazing meal which is good for weight loss. Um, it's a really nice, big, thick sandwich, a hearty bowl of soup, and it's something you know we can all enjoy. I also really enjoyed making the soup yesterday when we had a snowstorm here. It was a great thing to do inside. So I not only had a good time cooking in the kitchen, but now I get to eat it as well. So what if you don't like pickles? Can, do you have to have the pickles, or can you remove them? No, the pickles are totally, totally optional. And what um, about the actual leaves that you use in the lettuce, the, the sandwich? Could you use a different type of salad again? Totally optional. If you want to cut out the cheese or if you want to have more tomato or no tomato, you can you can fix it however you like. Mix and match to how you like it? Exactly. Exactly. And then there's another level. of So we've made our soup, and I made it with a ham hook, or you can just add cut up ham, and that's very good too. And if you say, absolutely not, I refuse to cook soup, um, you can get and ham soup in the supermarket and you know and some people will say oh I never eat out of a can other people will say I never step foot in the, ki the kitchen if I have to make soup so we try to be a big tent and so whether you cook or whether you don't cook you can have I diet legal meals and in my local supermarket I found two good similar soups one was a healthy choice split pea and ham soup which was high in fiber and high in protein and the other one was a Campbell's brand with a new logo, which was a hearty lentil and vegetable soup. So either of these could substitute for the homemade soup if you don't if you don't want to get in the kitchen and do that cooking. One thing I noticed is that a lot of the products you use, you can get them at almost any supermarket. So, yeah. like for example, uh, healthy choice vegetable soup. I mean, that's one that you could find everywhere, not just uh, yeah. in the greater Boston area or anything like yeah. that, as well as Cabot or Thomas. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, we, we actually spend quite a lot of time looking for products because new products are coming on the market all the time. And that's one thing I know that you do is you scour the supermarkets and you get the group leaders to give you a list of specials in all the supermarkets every week so we can get the bargains in 
of the foods which are really healthy and really filling and really delicious too. Absolutely. And I want to add one thing. If anyone has any questions about anything that Dr. Robert's making, we have one of our group leaders, uh, Lee Bush, who's on the message board right now, who can answer any questions you might have. All right. So let's put these good meals away. Can mm. I give you that? If anyone um, came to the first one last time, I got to eat everything. But because Dr. Robert's made everything yesterday, I guess I'm not going to be eating as much, which a little disappointed about. Well, yeah. we can we can heat it up afterward. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's just clear this away a bit and move over to chicken palm. So just a, a quick comment. Chicken palm, I, so I mentioned in the beginning, I'm one of the group leaders. Chicken palm is one of the most uh, popular items that we have. Right in the beginning, it's one of the first meals that we have in one of our first uh, we home easy plans, right in the beginning. And chicken palm tends to be one of the favorites. And this is actually one of the recipes that I made first. And in my mind, this is kind of halfway between chicken palm and pizza, in a sense. And it, I mean, that sounds stupid, but it's got a white base, it's got tomato sauce, it's got cheese. So if you're really missing pizza, it's also a good, uh, it's also a good thing for that. So here's what we have. And again, this is a ridiculously simple recipe, but it starts with a pan. And I have to admit that my pans are very, they don't look very pretty. So I went out and I bought some, some disposable ones for this. And we put just a little spray on the bottom of the pan. And then I have here um, a pound of skinless chicken breast, which is, your, which is our main ingredient. Now, I've cut my pound of chicken into four pieces. So this is a, is a four ounce piece of chicken. And you can see on the plate that it looks really small. And if you had to eat that, I think many of us would think, it's, um, it's a pretty small piece of chicken, not, uh, not such a great portion size. And so what we start with is we open the chicken breast up. We take a piece of chicken breast and we slice it so that it becomes a much more substantial size. And so I've done that with three of the pieces of chicken. I already cut them because I wanted to make sure that uh, it didn't take too long doing things like that. And then I'm just going to also demonstrate uh, how to slice the piece of chicken that I didn't do. And so basically you take the chicken and you, you go in and you keep slicing and you keep slicing. It's almost like butterflying, um, so that you can tease it apart without actually severing it all the way through. So instead of a small piece of chicken like that, the surface area is much bigger. So you've got a much more substantial piece of chicken to, to serve. So we have our four pieces of chicken. And then we spoon on about a cup of tomato sauce. Um, this particular tomato sauce comes from Trader Joe's, but there's lots of good tomato sauces out there. What you have to do is look at the food label because some of them, you know, they had a fresh ingredient is tomato and they have um, not too many calories, which in my mind is, you know, maybe 50 calories per serving, something like that. Um, but there's others which are loaded down with oil and they might go up to 100. So you wouldn't get any more taste, but you would get a lot more calories. So we smooth the tomato sauce on very nicely. Either you can bake it just like this at this point. Um, you can put mushrooms underneath the tomato sauce, some sordate mushrooms if you want to um, go the whole hog and uh, make something very special. But it's really good like this too. And then you can either bake it like it is and put the cheese on close to the end, but you can also just put the cheese on right now. Sprinkle your cheese on. This is grated Parmesan cheese, and I have to admit that I have a block and I grated it because there's a world of difference between um, bottled Parmesan cheese and non-bottled kind. 
and I then I can't get over how much more chicken it appears because you cut it yeah. off like that. If you look at the difference between the original size versus the new size, it's like yeah. as much. Yeah, it's like a whole. It's like a whole big thing at this point. It really looks like like four substantial servings, and so we cover it with foil, and we bake it at um, three seventy five to 400 for about one hour and it's done um, and that again it's a delicious meal it's as natural and fresh as you want and uh, you've got a dinner which will which will please almost everybody I did cook um, two versions uh, two, two servings earlier to demonstrate uh, to demonstrate the dish and so here we have our, our chicken palm, and we can, um, so that's one portion. And doesn't it look great? It looks like a great portion. And I've got a salad here, which I'm going to have on the side, which is just really a simple lettuce salad with some carrots and some peas and some pine nuts. Um, but that's a great dinner. And I'm going to add some dressing, and you have a complete idea legal meal, which almost everybody in the family will enjoy. And if you have, you know, kids in your family who want something more substantial, you can have some pasta on the side for them. You can have some bread on the side for them. So it's a very easy thing for you to to have with other family members. I think whenever someone enters into a weight loss program, that's a big barrier. They they end up having to cook multiple dinners. Yeah. So this is something you're saying, you know, kids would like and other family members might like as well. Definitely, definitely. And you can have this one afterwards because it's cooked. Oh, awesome. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Ooh, this? All right. Okay, so what next? I think we can um, we can move over on to products, I believe. Sure, absolutely. So uh, without question, we get people who love to cook and then we get other people who not so much. So in addition to showing some of the delicious recipes, we wanted to show you a few products uh, that people in our program tend to typically purchase. Um, a big one without question is uh, Fiber Gourmet. So Fiber Gourmet, we're not sponsors, partners with them or anything, um, but the fact of the matter is it's a company that figured out how to make healthy pasta. Uh, so this is one of the more popular, very similar to the chicken palm. You mentioned you maybe putting something that's on the side of the kids, um, but it's actually a pasta that's fortified with fiber. Dr. Roberts is going to talk a little bit in a little in a little bit about the importance of fiber, but fiber is very important for feeling full. So even though this looks like normal pasta, it's going to have something like four or five times as much fiber as other uh, other typical pastas are going to have. So it's going to actually make you a lot more full just from this. Yeah. So this is uh, fiber gourmet pasta. It really it really works, and it really tastes almost identical to regular pasta, right? I, I actually like it very much. That's a good point. So one thing that you mention a lot is that you can't just make healthy food. It has to be healthy food yeah. that tastes good. Yeah. And this is an example. Yeah. And especially if you have kids. Many kids are resistant to eating whole wheat pasta. I mean, that's the honest truth. It's healthy and all that, um, but they won't eat it. And, and this has got tons of fiber, and they don't realize it's any different. Absolutely. Uh, and actually, I'm going to actually stay with the same company. So um, with our plans, we have meals and snacks. So this is an example of maybe potential dinner. Uh, we also have uh, snacks. So uh, again, high fiber is what we go for. So these are the same company, Fiber Gourmet, but these are called Pinnables. Uh, I like to think of them as a healthy alternative to Cheez-Its because that's it kind of kind of looks like a Cheez-It. So again, it's a comfort food, something that something that looks like a traditional food, something you would have normally. Uh, let me put this right under the camera so you can see it. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, if you look at it under the camera, you'll see that it basically looks just like Cheez-Its. We got, uh, looks just like Cheez-Its. Um, but the difference is that it's fortified with fiber, so it'll make you feel a lot more full than a regular Cheez-It would. I keep these at work. And, and um, they were great. They were great snack in the middle of the morning. In fact, that's a good point. Uh, Doctor Roberts made the soup earlier, which holds very well. You can make, you can batch cook it, so it might be good a little while later. Mm -hmm. This is the same deal. You can buy a bag of these, put it into an individual portioned uh, uh, Ziploc bag, and bring them into work. You could be good for the entire week from this one bag. I'm just thinking ahead. I bet these would make great croutons too. 
Uh, absolutely, yeah. If you ever wanted you to put use them, in, put them into a soup. You know, you could um, you could take a a can of soup that had less fiber mm -hmm. and add a quarter of a cup or a third of a cup of those, and you would have a really high fiber soup of you know anyone that you want. Something That's, agreed, hundred uh, percent. Something cool to do is to compare the nutritional info for this for something like croutons and see <sighs> how much you, better you do if you were to substitute yeah. this. There's not many foods that I can't replicate, you know, that's what I do on the weekend is I try to make either legal food from regular food but by changing the ingredients and things like that. Croutons is one of the ones I haven't been able to do and it's like a brainwave sitting here thinking, oh my god, those cinnabols can actually just be croutons. I, I have a feeling the next cooking demo we might have a thinnable crouton might be the next thing on, on the list. You can have something like mushroom soup. Um, which I love with croutons, and it would be like totally delicious. And another thing about these too is there's four or five different flavors, so it's like you can have four or five different yeah. flavored croutons, or, or even four or five different flavors of these cinnamons. So All right, what else do you have there? Next on my list, I have. Um, let's talk a little bit about a free fiber baggie. So that's probably going to make sense to about forty percent of our audience. That anyone that's taken a group before are probably shaking their head like, "Okay, there we go." I knew right. they were going to talk about the free fiber baggie. But on the other hand, almost everybody uses them. But everyone that's ever been through our yeah. program uses these. So these are basically our emergency, how to make sure, what do you do if you have a hunger strike, a hunger attack, and your next meal or snack isn't scheduled for a little time. So basically what we have, and uh, let's see if I can put this under the camera for you guys. Um, so one of the things that we're big on our, our plan is, the, uh, is high fiber. So what I have here is half a cup of fiber one cereal. Um, but it doesn't have to be fiber one. We have other brands as well. For example, uh, Trader Joe's high fiber cereal, as well as uh, all brand is a really good option. So you have basically a cereal that's very fortified with fiber, but then you get to add two teaspoons of anything you want to this. Uh, it could be, let's see, chocolate chips. It could be peanuts. It could be taco seasoning is another one people do. If you're a person who likes sweet stuff, then you might want to go with something like chocolate. If you like something salty, maybe something more like almonds. And basically, if you're on our plan, this is our free food. So it's one of the snacks you can have if it's not time for your meal or snack. And I guarantee if you eat one of these, you're going to feel full for the next hour. Yeah. And again, it's going to be half a cup of high fiber cereal, maybe, uh, I don't know, fiber one cereal, for example, or all brand, for example. Those are two really good products. And then two teaspoons of anything that you like, your favorite food or your favorite type of food. It can be chocolate, like you see in mine as well, or it can be nuts, or it can be even taco seasoning. One, one qualifier here, you have to have a drink with it. Yes, That's good important. Point. You can have an herb tea, you can have water, something with low calories, because in order for that fiber to go to work, you need some liquid to mix with it, and so that's actually really important. Absolutely. Uh, my personal favorite, I get these really small chocolate chips, the tiny ones, because you get more, and I have one teaspoon of those, and I have one teaspoon of roasted sunflower seeds. It's delicious. And what about, can you talk about dark chocolate versus light chocolate? Oh, dark chocolate all, all the way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming from England, I have to say, I didn't really like dark chocolate for years. I had to work on it. You know, I'd grown up with milk cho chocolate. Um, but now, you know, I'm totally uninterested in milk chocolate. And I crave dark chocolate, which is, which is healthy. Uh, it's a great addition. It's so strong, you don't need to use much. Dark chocolate being healthy. That's one of the, you have aha moments all the time in, in these groups. And, and one of the things that was an aha moment with me is actually learning that the, the active ingredient, cocoa, in chocolate is extremely healthy by itself. Yeah. It's when, you know, they add sugar, they add milk, that it becomes something that's no longer good for weight control. But if you look at dark chocolate just by itself, it's it's really good. It's, it's good for you, high in fiber and protein. Yeah, and it has all of these kind of flavonols. That it, things which are good for health, which are probably good for anti-aging, good for cognition, all kinds of things. They cross the blood-brain barrier. They get into your head. They do so many good things. So I don't think that we should be um, telling people not to eat chocolate. It's there great food. So I, I, continuing on with the theme, you'll see that we talk about fiber a lot in this program. And we're going to actually talk a little bit at the end. Dr. Roberts is going to talk a little bit about how the typical American doesn't get as much fiber as their body should and can handle. Um, so my next item I'm going to show is another one with fiber. So uh, this is going to be the chocolate cereal dessert. I think uh, this is one of those things where people first hear about our plan. They say, "Wait, well, you can have a chocolate dessert. That doesn't that doesn't sound like it's a weight loss plan." 
Um, but the fact of the matter is you can. It just needs to be the right type of chocolate. So I have here, actually, I'm going to show our beginning. I'm actually going to show you actually how to prepare something that we call the I Diet Chocolate Cereal Dessert. And for anyone that uh, received an invite, you also received as an attachment a cookbook. And if you haven't, if you go to uh, theidiet.com, you can download the cookbook. And this is one of the items in the cookbook. So I have here uh, the starting ingredients for an I Diet Chocolate Cereal Dessert. And it's pretty simple, actually. You're going to go ahead and take uh, one-third of a cup of high-fiber cereal, and you're also going to take one square of good dark chocolate. Uh, for example, I'm using... It's there next to the oh. cereal bun. I'm using lint. So, like, the most traditional, you can get it at any single grocery store you can possibly, uh, possibly find. And I like the 85% dark cocoa. You could probably start with the 70 and move your way up to the 85, uh, but the 85, the darker the cocoa or the more percent cocoa, the better for you. So if I could just get the overhead camera, um, what you're going to do is you're going to get one third of a cup of high fiber cereal and then one of these squares of this nice dark chocolate. Uh, one of these squares is going to equal about 100 grams and the majority of the nice chocolates, it's, it's going to all be the same. So you know you're good with the one square. And you're actually going to put this in the microwave. Um, what I would recommend, because frankly, uh, if you put it on 40 seconds, for example, you could possibly burn the cereal. Um, so I usually do it for about 20 seconds, take it out, kind of play around with it, see if it's melting a little bit, go for another 10 seconds. And by the time I get to about 40 seconds, it'll be melted. And the end product is going to look a little like this. So as you can see, we did this a couple hours ago, so it's kind of solidified a little. Um, but it, it looks like it was actually designed to be chocolate uh, fiber cereal. And then if you kind of rehydrate a little bit by adding a third of a cup of milk, this is going to change to somewhat of a chocolate milk consistency. Or it's going to look just like chocolate milk. Uh, and it's going to be a really, really delicious dessert. It's not going to be the sweetest. But the, actually, believe it or not, the 501 cereal is a little sweet. Um, and that mixed with a little bit of sweetness from the chocolate makes this a fairly sweet dessert. But more importantly, after you eat this, about 20 minutes later, you're going to feel full because of all the fiber that's in the 501. And people really like this. I like this. One thing I do, I used to crave grasshopper cookies. Mm -hmm. And it was just something I couldn't keep in my house so, because I couldn't control them. I was adding a couple of mints of a couple of drops of mint essence on yes, top of that, and I got my chocolate mint fix that way. And you know, it also helped my cravings disappear because I was getting that, you know, that very unique flavor combination from something that wasn't causing craving. That's a really good point. I'm glad Dr. Roberts mentioned that. So you can add a couple of drops of mint, and it changes the taste completely of this cereal dessert. That's actually something a lot of people might go out through our most of our program and. and not do, but adding mint is a really good idea. You just need a couple of drops. Yeah. One thing, I mean, there's so much, you know, negative stuff about sugar in the media right now that I thought we might say, well, you know, chocolate does have sugar. And my take on sugar is that, sure, we shouldn't be eating lots of sugar. But at the same time, I don't think it's poison either. And a few grams here and there is not going not gonna to be harmful for anyone. So we take a an attitude that yes, we want people to end up on a low sugar diet. That's one of the reasons that we say artificial sweeteners are a good bridge to a low sugar diet for those who feel comfortable with that. Um, but when you get a tiny bit of sugar in something like chocolate, it's totally fine. It's not something you have to freak out about. Absolutely. I, the yeah. best weight loss plan is one you're going to stick to. I remember, um, yeah. I have one more. I completely forgot the ice cream. Uh, oh my goodness. This. That's actually, and I haven't tasted this ice cream. So I'm very excited to try it. So another product, and I know that a few, most of the, or maybe half the people watching this are actually currently in iDiet groups. So this is probably something where, again, people see this and they go, oh, there it is. Um, so there's a lot of new brands coming out of uh, desserts, uh, ice cream. They're, they're kind of more of like a whey supplement, uh, but they're still fortified or they have the right stuff added, artificial sweeteners or some kind of sweetener um, in order for it to be a little sweet. For example... Um, looks like this one, xanthan gum, there's some other things in there, cane sugar. But more importantly, um, this whole entire pint of ice cream is going to have 150 calories. 
uh, and it's going to actually be high in both uh, protein. It's going to have a little bit of protein, a little bit of fiber to, to it. So we're looking at three grams of protein and two grams of fiber. And what I do with this is you can have about 70 calories of this, so maybe half of this, and then add a little bit of the high fiber cereal. And it tastes similar to an ice cream sundae where the high fiber cereal is going to be um, the cone and then the ice cream is going to be a little bit of the sweet stuff. So again, if anyone's trying to write these down, it's, it's Arctic Zero. And another one out there that people are like is um, one that is called, I um, cannot think of the name right now, Arctic Zero and Halo Top is the second one. Can we try it? Yeah, of course. So one thing to note about this ice cream is it's got a different consistency. So you should actually leave it on the counter for 10 to 15 seconds or put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Okay. Um, leave it, you mean 10 to 15 minutes on the counter? Yes, yes. 10 to 15 minutes on the counter or 30 seconds in the microwave. Nevertheless, we will, we will persevere now in the, in, the, in the spirit of experimentation. This is, looks like it's chocolate flavor. Absolutely. But yeah, this would be uh, cookie shake. Okay. So you need to put it in the microwave. So you're right. It is quite hard. Um, but it's great. It's actually great. You know, I think we really believe that having things that you enjoy and things which are of a good composition is really important because then you get full, but you also get the taste that you love. So searching around for products that work is, is really important. And that's also why we have not taken any sponsorship from any food companies because we want to feel free to recommend good products wherever they come from. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so let's see. We handled the uh, the recipes. We had the dinner. We also had uh, some of the products that uh, a typical person in our mm -hmm. program might use. Uh, we ended with dessert because how else would you want to end? Um, so the last thing that we had on our list is actually going to be uh, five questions for Dr. Robert. So these are actually questions that uh, people have submitted uh, wanting to know the answer. So a couple of these are from uh, people who are currently in the program, and a couple are for people who are considering joining the program. So let's start with a couple cooking since we're, we're on the cooking demo. Uh, Dr. Roberts, what's your favorite I diet recipe and why? Oh boy. Um, I like so many of them. Um, if I, it's one of these questions, if I had to be on a desert island with one food, uh, I don't know what that food would be. I would say that lasagna is high up there. I really like, I love lasagna and the recipe is delicious. So I really like the lasagna. I like the chocolate chip strawberries. Um, I quite often make those for parties, so they're really good. Um, I like the pea and ham soup a great deal. I like the fiber dessert a great deal. I, I lo I'm one of these people who really loves food. I think many of the people coming to Ida are like that. So it's actually really hard to choose one favorite recipe. But let's say lasagna for now. Lasagna, absolutely. I also noticed that you make a lot of soups. Uh, so yeah. soups versus salads, uh, which, which side are you on? I'm on the soup side in the winter and I'm on the salad side in the, winter, in the summer. I like that because yeah. I think people can, have been, anyone that's been in a group, you probably heard someone say something like, I am so sick of, of sa salads. I feel like I have a salad every day. So I found it very interesting that you very rarely eat salads when, in the winter time. I don't, I don't, I eat salads maybe once a week during the winter and I eat them most days in the summer. And conversely, you know, probably half the days of the week I have a soup for lunch or something like that um, mm -hmm. in the winter. It's cold. I like making it when it's snowing. So it works on a number of levels. And another thing that Dr. Roberts mentioned earlier, but just to reiterate, you can batch cook a soup. So you cook one on a Sunday and you're good for the entire week. I mean, you saw Dr. Roberts make yeah. two meals out of that, that one soup over there, and there's still more than half of that soup left. So next, again, sticking with the theme of cooking, uh, what's your favorite ingredient to cook with? Mm. My favorite ingredient, oh boy. Um, I like plain Greek yogurt. You can do a lot with it. You can make it into a dip. You can make it into frozen yogurt. You can add it to sauces, that's really good. I would say coarse wheat bran is really flexible. I put it in bread. I put it in soup sometimes. That's another really good ingredient. I, yeah, the one the high or the Greek yogurt was the one that you mentioned. So Dr. Mm -hmm. Roberts has made a few recipes that I would never in a million years would expect to go with Greek yogurt. First one that comes to mind is the enchiladas. When you're reading like uh -huh. Greek yogurt and then you taste it and you say, Wow, there's 
There's a lot more uses for Greek yoga than you might have yeah. imagined. I think the brand is really important. I mean, some of them have this really kind of strong acid, you know, kind of sci-fi taste on it. And and I don't like them, but but others are very very good. So I think the market basket yogurt is a really good plain yogurt. Um, I I personally like Faye, but I would encourage everybody to try the different brands, you know, one by one, and see the see the one that you like, because they really do taste very different. Absolutely. Um, so I know this is a cooking demo, but at the end of the day, you know, your your main job is you're a scientist. So I do have a couple questions about uh, kind of some research studies that you've done in the past. Um, so the I Diet released a paper that found that people's hunger actually decreases uh, while losing weight on the I Diet. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how it's possible to reduce your hunger while losing weight? I think the typical American diet is so unsatisfying. It's very little fiber. There's lots of refined carbs. And they just get digested so quickly, those diets, that you eat them and then two hours later or two and a half hours later, you're starving hungry just because it's all got digested. And slowing down digestion and getting in, particularly getting in fiber, but also increasing the protein a bit, increasing the volume, having low GI carbs by predominance rather than high GI carbs, all of those things together, which are the signature of our diet, um, you know, each each one individually works on hunger control, and you put them together, and it's dynamite. And that's why we have the meals too, because that's yeah. a lot of science right there. It's kind of yeah. you can't get a PhD in order to lose weight, but the yeah. meals kind of packages everything. Well, I think the goal for me is to make it as easy as possible for users. And if we package all the science into the meals, so that all they have to do is eat the food, then it's really easy. They can learn about the science too. But they don't have to, you know, have a PhD in nutrition in order to lose weight. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk a little bit about fiber. So I wanted to continue on that theme of fiber. Um, can you talk a little bit more about fiber? And are Americans getting enough fiber on a daily basis? All right. So Americans eat less than half of the amount of fiber that's recommended today. I diet actually recommends more fiber than the dietary guidelines for the reason that we're talking about weight loss here. We're not talking about just general healthy eating. So the average American diet probably has a third as much fiber as we like to see people eating. That's a huge difference. And you know, Paleolithic man actually ate something like seven times the amount of fiber that the average American eats today. So we're not you know, doing anything outrageous here. We're just trying to reverse the balance and give people the kinds of fiber intakes that their human intestine is designed to have. But fiber has a number of effects. It slows down digestion. It fills up the intestine so that the stretch receptors get signal that, yes, there's food in here. Um, it reduces the rate of glucose entry into the bloodstream, which is good. Uh, especially for diabetics, uh, it, it, it smooths out blood glucose. So it has all of these beneficial effects that, you know, go completely unnoticed, I think, by most people because fiber really isn't like a, a cool nutrient. It's, it's not something which is on most people's radar. And I hope that's changing. Me too. It's not a cool nutrient. We're right? trying to change it. <laughs> and can you talk a little bit about uh, why water is essential when it comes to fiber as well? Okay, so there's two, there's two kinds of fiber. There's soluble fiber, then there's insoluble fiber. But both of them, they, they're basically filling up the intestine in different ways. Soluble fiber makes the stomach feel very full. So when you have a pea and ham soup, there's quite a lot of soluble fiber in that, and you, you feel very full in your stomach. When you have um, a high fiber cereal, that's an insoluble uh, fiber which tends to work lower down in the intestine because it doesn't absorb a lot of water directly. Mm -hmm. um, but in both cases, the water helps the fiber work better. And so you have your fiber in one hand and you have your water in the other, and that's a really good combination. Absolutely. We are down to our last question, um, and it's actually somebody wants to know about the program. So can you talk a little bit about the history of the eye diet as well as the future? The future and the history. So originally, this was an in-person-led program, actually in the room above my garage, just over there, um, while we were setting up the manual. 
And we pretty soon realize that although people love those in-person groups, you know, in practice, it's hard to get to them. You know, if it's seven o'clock in the evening and you come in from work and you're tired or you've got sick kids or something like that, um, the last thing you want to do is go out for a weight loss group. And um, the company convinced me to uh, try video conferencing to get people live in a video conference group. And I said, no, nah, it's never going to work. People will never like that. But they did. And actually, we have statistics that show they work just as well. Um, they are a slightly different experience, you know, you can't really see the eye contact of people and things like that, but there's a lot more message boards, people like them. And it was one time when a group leader who was testing out these new video conference programs came to me and said, we had the most amazing meeting last night, people were showing each other their pets. And I thought, okay, you can do things with video conferences, but everybody brought their pet along, and they're all showing their pets off. And so it's not quite the same as the live experience, but it does other things so well that in the end, people like them just as much. The future, I think, for us is ultimately that we are going to get an artificial intelligence system to do even more hand-holding so that you can have your groups, but you can also have um, you know, really cool options on your phone uh, that will give you support throughout the day too. That's the next step, and we are I'm looking into funding to build that to build that very sophisticated platform. Unbelievable. Um, so that's all we had today. Uh, just a quick quick recap. We started with the split ham and pea soup. Uh, we moved on to the I diet chicken parm. Uh, we then moved to some of the items that we typically uh, see people in our program use. Uh, things like fiber gourmet products, the pinnables, the pasta, uh, as well as maybe the Arctic Zero. And we lastly talked about the iDiet chocolate cereal dessert, went through a few questions. So this is very similar to actually how our program is, is, is run. We, we have a little science, we have a little cooking, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of support. Um, so if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about our program, we're actually going to have a, a, a page that's going to appear at the end of this uh, webinar. I'm also going to try to get a replay link out to everyone in case you missed something or you want to slow it down a little bit to look at some of the ingredients that Dr. Roberts cooks with. And my hope is that you try the recipes and you think they're great and you give them to your family and they think they're great too. It's all about the food. That on the, that's our bottom line. So thank you, everyone. Um, and if you have any feedback or you wanted another cooking demo, some different items you want, please let us know uh, and we'll see you next time.